Well, welcome back, everybody. Sounds like our signal dropped out a little bit. We are in quite a deep drainage line here with Hosanna, a young male leopard. Uh, so I don't know if you heard me saying about the crested bar, but it was the bird that was actually calling. But it has been calling a little bit while we've been sat here. Now, Hosanna has actually rolled onto his back a couple of times and exposed his belly. And that's quite normal for a cat that's had quite a big meal. Now, you should be able to see his belly coming into shot now. So he has filled himself up on the Impala. So that's going to be busy digesting. And that di the, the, the process of digesting is going to be creating heat. And that's why mammals actually eat. So if you think about the cold and warm-blooded animals, so they're warm-blooded, they eat to stoke their furnace, if you like, and that produces the heat and that keeps us warm. Whereas the cold-blooded mammals actually need to be warmed up by the sun so that they get to the right temperature so that they're able to digest their food. So we have different systems. So that's going to be creating a lot of heat in his belly and in his body. And the belly skin is usually quite thin compared to other places. So they roll onto the back, so it exposes their belly, so it can actually help to uh, reduce the heat. And sometimes if there's a breeze, obviously that will help to keep them slightly cooler as well. But that looks like quite a nice, soft, sandy place just to chill out and allow that digestion to happen. Dear watcher, that is definitely one very sleepy cat. And I'm the same, if I've had a, a big lunch, <laughs> I'm quite happy to go for a bit of siesta, I must admit. <laughs> so hopefully if people can actually give me a hand and uh, tell me who his father is. As I say, I thought it would, might have been Mvula, but uh, it could be Tingana. So if anyone wants to help me out with that, uh, as you all are aware, I love learning about who has actually been uh, related to who or who is related to who and how everyone links together because that for me increases the knowledge about the animal behavior brilliant thank you so a lot of you are saying it's tingala uh, so thank you very much craig for pointing that out as well uh, so we weren't 100 percent sure but thought we'd check with you guys as well because you know the leopards so well so it's always great to know now i was actually trying to see if there is anything um, familiar that he shares with his uh, other siblings and uh, we're talking about the necklace uh, around the neck and leopard spots are unique to each cat and that's how we can identify them but there will be characteristics or traits that leopards can share so the collar um, can be quite a, a, a normal characteristic that you find on leopards. Some leopards actually have quite a thick necklace, some leopards may have a broken up necklace, some might not quite have a necklace at all but that is one of the features that you often find on leopard and spots around the eyes as well and quite often um, I've actually seen leopards that are related may have similar features as well so with Karula, she had the wow across her forehead, and that seems to have been passed down to Hosanna's sister. And uh, I've, I've noticed uh, one of the litter mates from the fourth litter seemed to share the Y at the corner of the eye, uh, like Mishu, the son from the third litter. So Roshni actually asking quite an interesting question about the genetics of the leopards and can you actually confirm the male. Now when we say the father of the cubs it's really who we've seen mating uh, with the females if we're lucky enough to catch that or if the male has been in the area but it, unless you've actually been with them throughout the whole period of time it is quite difficult to know for sure the only r sort of certainty you can have is the cubs with the mother so that, that's the really certain one so that the father is a little bit more of the guesswork and uh, interestingly uh, I think they are making a study uh, on the leopards in the Sabi Sands uh, because everybody knows the history of the cats 
and I think they are looking into seeing uh, if they can actually identify the males with the DNA and the father, the, the parentage with the DNA. So that's going to be really fascinating to uh, read about once the research is actually done because the, the process of mating actually can occur over several days and during that time it is possible if a female um, isn't followed closely enough by a male or if another male comes in and actually fights for the right to mate it, it could be that the male who she's with could be actually um, chased off or she might give him the slip and actually mate with another male so it is possible they could have multiple partners uh, so as I say we, we you do have to take it with a bit of pinch of salt about uh, the males it's not clear-cut uh, who is the father it's just who we believe is the father uh, all based on as I say who we've seen them with or who the male is in the area and generally speaking the females do seem to have a, a preference as well so uh, back when I was guiding uh, a few years ago Yambidi or Dan seemed to be the big male in the area he seemed to be the strong male and he seemed to be the mate of choice uh, for Karula uh, and then Mvula in those days was actually on the eastern boundary a cheetah cut line didn't really go past Gauri, uh, Gwari Pan uh, but apparently she did uh, or she was seen mating with him and it's possible her fourth litter came from the mating with Mvula and now Mvula has been chased off by Tingana Hi Lauren Welcome on board this morning, asking if Karula was unusual uh, raising so many cubs or have other leopards raised as many cubs as Karula. And I'm sure they have. And uh, that's one of the great things about meeting other guides and hearing all the other stories. And I think a lot of lodges have blogs now, so you're able to actually follow the progress of uh, other leopards. But uh, for me, as I say, what was amazing about Karula is that she seemed to have success. Now, obviously, we're not sure what happens when, in the first few weeks uh, of Karula actually giving birth to cubs, because the cubs, when they're born, they're, they're tiny, they're like this, and they, they're so vulnerable, they're blind, you know, they're helpless, uh, so she'll actually leave them in a den, and when she goes off to hunt, because obviously she needs to keep the milk flowing, so she needs to be in tip-top condition, so she'll leave the cubs in a den. They could be exposed to anything if there's wild dogs around, snakes around, even uh, something small as like a jackal could actually take a leopard cub. So in those very early weeks, it's very hard to know if she's actually given birth to m more cubs than what you actually see once they come out of the den and you get to see them a little bit more often so when they get to about three months old you see them starting to climb trees and you get a lot more visuals of them so we kind of taken it from those sightings but they have been very successful and we only really know of one litter that she lost uh, due to a hyena coming in and I think she was in the process of moving those cubs and the hyena uh, came and found her and actually took those cubs and that was obviously very very upsetting but it is quite natural uh, for predators to lose litters in that way but what was amazing was that Karula didn't seem to have that up until that point and the fact that she had five five litters making it through to adulthood was just really quite an accolade to her as I say, she, she really was quite an amazing leopard. But even her mother, Safari, she had one eye for many years. And she went on until she was 19 years old. And I think probably had multiple cubs as well. So I think it's, it's strong genes in the family as well. So Hosanna hopefully uh, will pass on those genes, as will his sister. <laughs> Cheeky Beth, I'm hoping I'm getting your name right. Welcome on board this morning. Cheeky Beth, asking if females have a good idea who the strong males are. And it is, it's, they're going to be looking for uh, the males who have the loudest roar, uh, and that will actually generally be the territory holder in that area. Um, so 
showing off how strong they are. Um, so they'll actually scratch on trees, and the highest scratches on the trees shows how tall they are. So it's quite a, they're quite a visual predator. Uh, so they'll be looking for those signs. Um, so they'll actually be able to see for themselves as well and hear for themselves. So you generally get uh, a territorial male who will defend an area, and that will generally overlap with a number of females. Uh, so it's sort in the Sabi Sands, the males hold maybe about a 6,000 hectare territory. Females, it seems to be an average of about 2,000, which is quite small really for leopards. So there's quite a high density of leopards, but there's also quite a high density of food as well, which seems to be able to support them. So within that, that, that male's territory, if he's on the ball, he, he will actually check to see if females are in, in estrus. And uh, obviously if he picks one up, then he'll actually trail her and find her. And as I say, if she's willing to mate, then she will allow him to mate with her. And the older males obviously tend to be larger, and if they're older and they're larger, they've survived. So of course they've got to have strong genes to have survived that long. So they might, even if a young male approaches, it's not likely they'll want to mate with them. Uh, just because obviously they don't know if they are going to be passing on good genes or not. So showing the dominance and showing how strong they are really uh, does help for the female to choose them. Now the guinea fowl have been calling actually just over the ridge at the back but they've actually quietened down quite a lot now. Safari Dean uh, asking me what I think of Hosanna's size and uh, what the biggest leopard that I've seen. Well, the leopards in the the place where I was doing my research in Leinenberg generally were much larger than leopards here in the Sabi Sands and that could be because they have to deal with much cooler temperatures. Apparently uh, it's the Bergman's rule, so in colder colder temperatures the animals are larger because they need to conserve heat so the larger you are the less surface area you have to lose heat whereas uh, in somewhere quite warm like this uh, you can afford to be a little bit smaller uh, and make sure that your surface area um, is larger enough that you can actually expect which is obviously very important to try and keep cool so the, the cats there, I think, were reaching maybe 80, 85 kilos. And certainly the, the big male that I saw there. Hosanna is a little bit small, but he's not, he's not very old. Um, all the kids can help me out for when he was actually uh, born. I'm thinking he's about 18 months old, but uh, I'll be able to correct, correct, correct. 